In this tutorial, I'm going to be discussing this great new version of the Adobe Paper Texture Pro panel. And of course, this version is an HTML version that will run in Adobe Photoshop CC14 only. Okay, let's get started with the basics, and then I'll also show you some advanced tips and techniques for working with this panel. This panel, of course, is designed to apply textures to your images here inside of Photoshop easily and quickly. Here are some examples that I created from some photographs I took in Italy. Of course, this first image, this second image, and of course, this third image all have this really amazing painterly quality to them when you add a combination of multiple textures to the images. Okay, let's get started. Let's demonstrate how this is done. Of course, right over here within the panel, you can see all of the textures you can select. And you should also know, of course, if you're installing this for the first time, you go up to the window menu down to extensions and then select Adobe Paper Texture Pro. I've set it up so it aligns right in here with my other panels. With this panel open, I can of course select a texture directly and apply it to the image. The icons you see here in the panel itself is a small thumbnail that represents the full resolution of the texture I'm using. Now, let's get started right down here at the bottom and show you under the More section where these default textures come from. They're supplied to me by a company called Fly Paper Textures. It's a great catalog of textures, and if you click right down here under Find More Textures, you can go directly to their website and purchase some great collections to add to your set of textures. And of course, you're asking yourself, can I load those new textures into this panel? The answer is yes, of course, and I'll demonstrate that in just a moment. But now back to the basics. I'm going to remove all the textures down here under Reset to Defaults. Clicking on this, it removes all the textures, and you can see my original image here in my Layers tabbed panel. Now, you simply go over to the texture, click on the texture you want to apply, and it will then apply that texture using the blend mode that appears here at the top right here. If you click and hold, you can choose any of the other blend modes found in Photoshop. I like overlay as the default. I'm going to leave it there for the rest of this project. You can continue through and add additional textures simply by clicking on the textures. You can then add the combination of all of those textures together to get really unique results. Now, there's one other thing you need to know. It's right down here under brainstorming. You can now automatically select a random set of the textures that you currently have open. In this case, I've set this to a value of two for the number of textures, and I click right here under create random combination. It will then replace my existing textures with a new set of textures each time I click. As I go through this, I can then examine the results and decide whether it's a great starting point to continue my project. Now I like this one, it's a great start. I could go back up and add an additional texture simply by clicking on it and combine that with the random selection. So that's a great way to start a project. But wait, let's now move into the advanced section. You may like what you see here, but what if you want to adjust it slightly? For example, what if I want to use a layer mask to adjust the opacity of a particular texture? Now, of course, you can use a layer mask or you can target the layer and actually adjust the opacity by sliding the opacity slider here at the top. You could even go in and target a layer and readjust its blend mode. For example, the default that I chose was overlay. You could switch this to soft light, just like that, and get different results that you might like. But back to my idea about using a layer mask. Targeting the layer mask that's, of course, automatically applied to each of your layers, as you see here, I can then go in, for example, with the gradient tool. I'm selecting the gradient tool. Notice that I have a radial gradient here at the top. 
and I want to blend from black to white. So I'm going to switch my foreground and background colors. I'm going to click in the center and drag toward the edge. Watch what happens. It lightens up that particular layer, this center layer. If I turn this layer's visibility off and then on again, you can see how the texture has been isolated to the edges of the image and has been eliminated in the center. Also remember, you can hold down your shift key and click on the layer mask and turn it off and on again. So that's one way of reducing the amount of texture within your images with a layer mask and, in this case, a gradient. But I also like using the brush tool to brush in the texture. And since this is a non-destructive layer mask, in this case, if I paint with black, I can paint out the texture. I can switch the foreground color to white and bring the texture back. So that's a great advanced tip and technique for isolating the textures within your image. Don't forget to use selections in combination with this process for even more detailed results. Okay, now you're wondering, how can I load my own textures? To load your own textures, go right to this flyout menu right here, Add More Textures. I'm going to click on that and then select a folder. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to select a folder of textures, in this case, some flypaper textures. These, of course, are JPEG or PNG images. You can only load JPEG and PNG images as textures using this panel. I'm going to target this folder for the first time. I'm going to select Open. Watch what happens. A very important dialogue appears. The answer is always yes. You want to increase the speed and efficiency of this panel by creating small icons here within this panel instead of using the full size texture itself. So click yes. But by clicking yes, you are agreeing to the fact that you can then build each of these textures. Notice that it's automatically going through each of the textures in that folder and building a small thumbnail. It's saving these thumbnails into a folder called thumbnails that's inside of your texture folder. It only needs to create this once. You do not have to go through this every time, only once. Just so you know, if any of your textures are not compatible with this process, then a list of the incompatible files will appear at the end of the processing to indicate which ones did not get into your list of textures. It looks like my processing is complete. However, do not stop this process of creating these textures. If you do stop this in the middle of its processing of these small thumbnails, it will then leave gaps and holes within this dialog and it will not work. You will have to remove the thumbnails folder from the targeted textures folder and start again. Now you know. I'm going to click OK because mine is complete. Notice I have a new set of textures here to the right. I can go in and add an additional texture to this process. And of course, I can deselect any of the textures simply by clicking on it again. There's one final thing I'd like to show you. Right down here under the brainstorming once again. If you select on randomize blend modes, just like that, this feature will randomly choose between overlay and multiply. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to select four for my number of textures. And I'm going to select randomize blend modes. Randomize blend modes, of course, is going to give us overlay and multiply. I'm going to select create random combination once again. Now notice that some of these textures have overlay as their blend mode, as you see here, and other layers have multiply. So by checking the randomized blend modes, it's only randomly changing the modes between overlay and multiply, just to clarify that. OK, I'm going to remove all my textures and once again turn this off. And in this case, I'm just going to select two random textures and let's see what we end up with. That looks great. There you have it. 
some great ways to use the new Adobe Paper Texture Pro panel here inside of Adobe Photoshop CC14. Give these basic and these advanced tips and techniques a try on your next project.